And just today, the U.S. announced new sanctions on Russia for meddling in the 2016 election. CBS News Justice reporter Paula Reed joins me now from Washington with the latest. Paula, who specifically is being targeted by these sanctions? Well, here the U.S. government is sanctioning a wide range of entities for various activities that they say were all designed to disrupt Western democracies. Most notably and most high profile, of course, is their interference in the 2016 campaigns. Now, most of the people who were targeted in the sanctions are many of the same people who have already been indicted by special counsel Robert Mueller, including, of course, the Internet Research Agency, which officials say is a propaganda outfit that they use fake identities to pose uh, as real American citizens and to try to sow discord. Now, a separate set of sanctions were imposed on two Russian spy agencies. Of course, this is one of the strongest indications so far that the U.S. government is indeed trying to push back against Russia. Do you think that these sanctions, Paula, will really have impact on these individuals and the organizations that they're targeting? Yeah, so this will literally block them from traveling to the United States. It will freeze any assets that they have here in, in the U.S., prevents any U.S. businesses or individuals from doing business with these folks. But it's also important to note that many of these people, many of these entities were already on U.S. sanction lists. So if they were already on these U.S. sanction lists, why impose them now again? Well, it's interesting, of course, the timing, because many of these sanctions are actually have to do with a bill that was passed last year, but they're just right now actually being enacted. And then, of course, as you noted uh, in the introduction here, we have the situation in Britain where they're where they are expelling almost two dozen Russian diplomats for the poisoning attack. And a lot of people are criticizing the U.S. and some of the U.K. allies for not doing enough to sort of join in in pushing back against that attack. Do you think these sanctions come as a surprise, Paula? Are they more in line with Mueller's investigation into Russian interference as well? Well, let's, let's take Mueller's, Mueller's investigation sort of separately, because the fact is the indictment that Robert Mueller has secured from the grand jury, it doesn't really have a lot of practical legal effect. Putin is not going to extradite any of those people or allow any of those businesses to actually be processed through U.S. courts. We've seen this before when the Justice Department tries to go after folks uh, either hacking or meddling on behalf of foreign governments. It's largely symbolic. So when you have something like this, when you have sanctions, this is something that could actually actually have an effect, whereas the Mueller indictment, it was, again, it was symbolic in some ways, and perhaps others have anticipated that all of the details about how they meddled, laid out in a legal document, is just sort of laying out a framework for other U.S. citizens to be charged. And what other threats do you think were outlined in these sanctions besides just election interference? Of course. So there is another uh, set of attacks that they describe as, quote, the most destructive and costly cyber attack in history that disrupted global shipping and trade enterprises that was attributed to the Russian military. Um, and national security officials say Russian intelligence officials have been behind a broad range of attacks here in the United States. Uh, they told us that they have done the most that they can to try to sort of, quote, kick uh, the Russians out of a lot of systems that they have infiltrated. But, you know, Rena, national security officials, they always say there's two kinds of of entities, those who have been hacked and those that just don't know they've been hacked. Mm. So it's really hard to know uh, what we don't know about what other hacks they may have implemented. But uh, the U.S. government says they'll continue to try to search for those and help any business or other entities that are impacted by these attacks. Yeah, cyber war is not easy to fight, especially when you don't know who you're fighting necessarily. So, thank you very much, Paula Reed, for joining <laughs> us.